Hey guys! <laughs> I am coming to you live from my apartment! Yes, I moved out and this is gonna be the first official video that's filmed in my apartment. This is not gonna be my office. This is not where I'm gonna be filming at all. My office is getting ready right now. I'm ordering a bunch of stuff for it. It just hasn't come in yet and it's too bland to film in there. Granted, this is giving Ikea, like this is not giving the most fun background ever, but here we are. I'm also on a new camera and it's just like very much big girl moves. It's very like onto bigger and better things. Today we're going to be doing a long awaited Stranger Things video. This is not gonna be a video on season four, but season four is coming really soon after this. I will be doing a video, a full commentary review situation for season four, volume one and volume two once they come out. I'm working on the volume one right now. Today we are going to be going over all my thoughts on season one through three. If you didn't know, back whenever I didn't even have like 10,000 subscribers, I actually did full full episode commentary tracks, full episode commentary videos on Stranger Things season two. The real, the real ones know. The real ones know that I was sitting in my room. I was, I was a crazy Lucas Max shipper. Like I was obsessed. I was obsessed. I was like tearing up when Bob died. Like it was a big moment for me. Also, whenever I was filming those Stranger Things reactions, Part of the reason why I continued making videos was because I was having so much fun making those Stranger Things videos. So, if anything, I owe a lot of my YouTube passion, my YouTube career, if you will, a career move to Stranger Things because it actually helped me get really motivated to keep making videos. So ever since season four, volume one came out, I have been re-watching the first three seasons and just kind of getting a little bit of a recap, going to back to my favorite parts, seeing what was good, how the characters changed. And now I just have a lot to say about the entire show, like all of it. This is not gonna be an in-depth conspiracy theory video. This is not gonna be like me theorizing what could be happening in season four, volume two. This is not gonna be some in-depth on the plot and the world building of the upside down and all that. This is gonna be talking about a show. This is gonna be girl talk talking about a show. If you don't wanna girl talk about a show, then this is not the segment for you. This is going to be full girl talk, gossip, like literally all the opinions you probably don't care about, that's, the, that's what this is gonna be. So as we know, Stranger Things came out the summer of 2016. It took the world by storm. It became an instant hit. Everyone was talking about Stranger Things. Oh, are you watching Stranger Things? Oh, have you heard of that new show called Strangers or Stranger Things or Things the Thing? Oh my God, everyone's dressing up as the whole Stranger Things gang for Halloween. It's a huge, it's like world domination. Stranger Things domination is going on through the country, through the world, right? It was a show that was dark, but it was also funny. It brought out some grand new talent and it also shined a light on some overlooked talent as well. Almost everyone I know that has been like, oh, like, you know, whatever, Stranger Things this, like, I'm like, I'm not into it. They have soon ate their own words because they soon after love it. And they're talking, I'm binging Stranger Things. I love Stranger Things. And I'm like, that's what I've been telling you. But to be fair, I was one of those people. I was exactly one of those people that was like, oh, like Stranger Things just like isn't for me. Like, I just like don't care about aliens, even though it's like, it's, like not what they are. Like, I know it's like categorized as, like this alien, like sci-fi show, which it like definitely is. That just like wasn't like, I don't know why it got categorized as like an alien show. Cause it's just like, it's just like built different. It's just like built different and better. Since that year, Stranger Things has, like I said, took over the world. It's become the hit summer show. Everyone waits each summer for Stranger Things to drop because it just is, it's such a moment in time to witness a Stranger Things season drop. Everyone's talking about it, it's drama, and it's one of the shows that has a lot less discourse around it than um, say like Euphoria. Like Euphoria, the entire timeline is fighting. But Stranger Things is a little bit more calm and it's the most expensive show to ever be made. Season four is around $30 million an episode, which is absolutely insane. And 
in my opinion, a little bit over the top, might I say. I think it's a little bit over the top. I don't think that 30 million per episode is like needed. So like I said, this is gonna be girl talk. We're gonna be girl talking it right now. We're just gonna be like talking about Stranger Things, like how I would with my girls. I absolutely love the first season and I went back and watched it and I still think it is like the best season. It is just such a well-built story and a well-built world. It doesn't reveal too much that everything is obvious, but it's also not that uh, opposite end where it leaves questions that never get answered and that are just being vague to be vague. <laughs> Euphoria. <laughs> something in my throat. I love getting introduced to the characters, especially the babies, especially when seeing everyone so young. It's so cool, the sun is setting, and I'm literally gonna kill myself. Um, <laughs> and I love the format that they used for the first season and how they apply it to each season. I think it's really nice, and it, it makes the world seem less confusing. That's the one thing I love about Stranger Things, is that like a lot of the times, if you try to like watch new shows about sci-fi or supernatural things. You can get really confused with the world, you can get really confused with the boundaries, with the questions, with the terminology, and I think Stranger Things does a brilliant job at that, and I love the reason why is because it's like they're kids figuring this out, so it's pretty simple for viewers to understand, and I love it, and I love the format through the seasons where it all ties into their game. I think it's so brilliant. It was something that I didn't even really pay attention to that much whenever I first started watching, and I was like, oh, it's just D&D, &D. like it doesn't even matter, Sims and Dragons, like I literally don't care. I don't care. But in Stranger Things, I think it does a really good job at still explaining enough to where the viewer understands without over explaining where it's like feeding you the plot if that makes any sense because i have i am such a piece of shit because i will criticize something but then i'm like don't do the complete opposite like make sure you're like in the middle in the perfect middle spot because that's what i like that's what i like don't over explain and don't under explain explain it just the right amount or or else I think my favorite part of season one was, honestly, honestly, my favorite part of season one has to be the gang, like the OG gang. I don't really care about, oh, this is gonna sound mean, I really don't care, like I don't have like that much of a care for like the whole Nancy, like the older teenagers, like I don't know why, it just doesn't interest me as much as I thought it would. My opinion changed on that in season four, but like, uh, you know what I mean? The one thing that I absolutely hate that they did throughout the seasons is the disgrace that they did to Will freaking Byers. Seeing his character go from like main to like such a side character is breaking my heart actually because season two, he, he was acting his heart out. Why am I tied up? Why am I tied up? Why am I tied up? Will, why am I tied up? Like, he was phenomenal. Like, I remember thinking, like, Noah Schnapp is, like, the 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 showstopper of season two. I know everyone loves Millie Bobby Brown, and I love Lil Millie Bobby Brown, but I think Will's character in season two was just, like, I could not take my eyes off him. I thought he did such great performances, and it kills me that we get to season three, and he starts, like, fading out. And I get to season four, and it's, like, where is... What did, what did, we're not talking about season four. We're not talking about season four. And I feel like I'm seeing the same thing with Elle. Because uh, Elle was like the main, she's like the main character. And I loved seeing her in season three. And then after she loses her powers, it kind of like, they like don't want to give her screen time or they don't want to give her like an interesting plot. It's like really, it's really frustrating. Again, that's season four. That's season four. Sorry, I'm like literally on episode seven of season four as I'm watching this or as I'm filming this right now, so I'm like, it's on my mind, it's on my brain, right? I think tons of the characters had great development over the three seasons. We had Steve have an amazing character arc, like insane comeback. Insane comeback from the douchey boyfriend to like the one of the most loved characters in the, in the whole show. And we have some downfalls as well, like Mr. Mike. <laughs> I can't even speak about it because it's actually so nasty. Like, I don't know how Mike went from being like such a like a cool little like quirky kid to being like such a pain in the ass. Like he's nasty and he's like, he's just straight up mean. He's not even like funny mean like Erica. Erica's not even mean. She's just like 
funny. Like, Mike is just mean. He's nasty. He, like, he's dropping Will like no other. Like, it's actually so... I, I can't even talk about it. Like, I don't know why. We'll, uh, we'll get more into characters when I rank them. I love the amount of characters that they have. I think a lot of the times shows bring in too many characters and it's overwhelming, it's confusing, and it's basically feeding you a bunch of plots that you don't care about, right? And I love the introdu I love the introduction of Max. I think she was a great character. She's one of my favorite characters now. She's like all time favorite, like can do no harm. Like she's the it girl. Billy died. So it doesn't really matter. My favorite seasons, it goes from season one, season three, and then season two at the moment. Um, season two is good, but it's not like the best. I don't, I really don't like it when Elle is separated from the group. Like I know it's like a vital to the story, but I much prefer when they include her in the group and kind of keep her connected. Season two where she's like not with anyone the entire season. And then like season four where she's like not with them. Like it's like, it's very frustrating and it's just like, I get it, it's for the plot and I, I'm assuming it's gonna pay off in volume two, but it's just, ugh, it's like an eye roll, you know what I mean? I have a super strong love for season three. I think it is one of the best seasons. It's like, that's like my summer show. Like, you can't go through summer without doing a rewatch of season three of Stranger Things because it just gives good vibes. It's summer for them. It's a 4th of July show. Like it's like, it's got such a cool vibe to it. It's got this, it, it's almost got this like summer camp, like slasher vibe to it, which I love and like slasher, like kind of like this like summer camp horror, neon lights, bright colors. Like I love that, especially because Stranger Things takes place in the eighties. It's a horror. I love the references, the amount of references we have to eighties horror, eighties supernatural. It, is so good it's so freaking good and this is literally just me like praising stranger things or like literally this is girl talk i don't know why i keep defending myself because this is just girl talk and i get to say whatever the fuck i want and i get to talk about stranger things if i want to i think stranger things is a great job at separating different plot lines so they have they usually have about three groups they have you know in the third season there was the mall group there was you know 11's group and then there was the parent group and then there was uh jonathan and nancy and then they kind of combined jonathan and nancy with like the 11 group and then it, it just kind of like it all came together seamlessly i think we've been missing something and i think that's it i think the separation the major separation between like parents and children is like weird and it's also weird because it's like you, you, you're on your third time of doing this and you still don't realize that like you guys should probably talk to each other because you guys probably have some sort of insight on it. You know what I mean? I mean, for plot's sake, I guess it's good that they don't know because then they'll be able to connect the dots too easily. But for like realism, realism, realism as if a Demogorgon is not a real existing creature in this world. But like, I don't know. Like, I feel like after the third time of like dealing with this, like after like being attacked by things from the upside down, you would get with it and you would be like, let me call Hopper first. Let me call him first and maybe see what he's dealing with, right? Right. And not to mention the parents of these kids are awful like not even to the like it's almost like call cps on them because it's like so much neglect it's insane it's like child endangerment like you are neglecting your child the wheelers only care about the youngest little daughter holly they don't care about mike or nancy at all granted nancy's a little older jonathan's a little older steve's a little older like we don't even know where steve's parents are like they're older, I get it, but like the babies, like you didn't really care about Dustin or Lucas or like, you, you didn't care about them. They're just running, roaming, like literally doing God knows what. And then you get to season four and all of a sudden they care. But we can't even talk about season four. Don't talk about season four because it's not time yet. We can't talk about season two without talking about the episode. And I, I, know, you're, you're, I know what you're thinking of and I'm thinking of the exact same thing because that episode was cursed. That episode is so insane because 
People hated that episode so much that they never brought back Eight, and they were supposed to. Like, Eight was supposed to have a lot more, like, flashbacks. Like, she was supposed to be, like, a more prominent role in Eleven's character, but people hated that episode so much that they just like did not do that they didn't bring her back which was crazy and i think that's why like the transition from season two to season three was really abrupt as much as i love season three you had a lot of unanswered questions from season two that were like just kind of like Bleh. Like, yeah, Eleven, like, went off and went... She she was emo for a second with Abe, and she met people like her, and then, bye! Like, she doesn't care. Like, she literally doesn't care. She went all that season searching for her mommy, and then, like, she, like, literally doesn't care. Like, <laughs> she can't... She doesn't even... She's not even thinking about it. She has a boyfriend. She's kissing. And, like, honestly, that's such a middle school thing to do, but, like, come on. Like, she, like... And now it's all coming back, which is like fine that it's all coming back now in season four. It would have made a little bit more continuity sense if they added a little bit of that stringed into season three, which I think they did. A l they didn't. I'm such a big fat liar because they just like didn't. <laughs> I was going to try to give them the benefit of the doubt and be like, yeah, they like strung it like a little bit, like very slightly. Like they just like didn't. They like acted like that episode with number eight, like just didn't happen. Now I'm going to get into ranking characters because I feel like I'm talking in circles and I'm not really make any sense but that's girl talk if you don't like it do you have an issue with women be be honest if you don't like the girl talk format do you not do you have an issue with women speaking let's get into ranking characters because this is where like all my hot takes are going to come out and you guys are going to absolutely hate me so to rank these characters i'm just going to be using the tier maker that i i found this list i'll leave a link in the description you guys can send me your list and these are just characters up until season three so just bear with me the first character up here is barb and i know the weird need to bring barb back or to save barb was like kind of uncalled for and like I didn't really get it and I thought people were like joking. I thought it was a big fat joke to like, <laughs> for when people were like, save Barb, like bring Barb back. Like, I just didn't care. And to be honest, I feel like the people in the show didn't really care either. Meh, like, like she wasn't bad, but she wasn't like enough for me to be like, oh my God, like I need this character back. You know what I mean? Billy, um, that's terrible. Like he, like before he even got like possessed like by the mind player by the flare like he was a dick like i really don't care if you get possessed because you were racist a bully an abuser like he was awful like the way he treated max the way he treated lucas like it was insane and i felt absolutely nothing for him when he passed like i actually i wish i was the one to do it <laughs> i wish i was the one i wish i was the mind player at that point and i literally stuck my tentacle through him next up is bob i loved bob in the season like i almost cried when he died um so good but he wasn't like someone that i'd be like oh my god i need back now like he was good for his time being and like slay like that's a boots the sleigh house like you that was good like he served his time and now it's like joyce kind of like never really cared afterwards the way joyce didn't care joyce didn't care about bob dying and then like no one cared about barb dying like there's like because some characters yes but people just like don't care and mind you no one cared about billy freaking dying except for max was like it's obviously like because max had trauma associated with billy but like literally in season four like no one else cares <laughs> Dustin is the best of the best. He's like the OG boy. Like he reminds me of, he reminds me of Data from the Goonies. Like he's just very cute and he just like knows what he's doing and everyone doubts him, but he like knows his shit. Like they try to act like he's dumb and he's just a goofy little boy, but he's actually a freaking smart freaking boy. Like I love it and he's so cute and he's like, he's just like very consistent. Like I love a consistent character that doesn't like flip on me too much. But I will say, I won't even talk about it because that's a season four opinion. This is season three. Elle, Elle is best of the freaking best, like superior character. Like she is the one. Like I love Elle so much. Like I don't even think that she could do anything wrong. And I am just amazed by Millie Bobby Brown every single performance she does because it is so amazing like I her performances like make me tear up because she is so freaking good and it's like absolutely like 
it's it makes my like jaw drop when I'm watching her because I cannot believe someone of that like age could be capable of such talent and I know I'm like literally gooing all over her and you're probably like literally there's so many child actors but she just like has something she's so amazing and I love Elle I think Elle is an amazing character and I like need more of her now because season four is lacking Elle and like that's your freaking best character it's your freaking best character where is she that's why I love season three because she's in it like a lot She's in it a lot. Erica, best of the best, literally hasn't done anything wrong, very good at bargaining, knows what she wants, and is watching herself at the end of the day. And I, there is something so um, entrancing and enticing about a character that will backstab anyone to save themselves at the end of the day. Hopper, best of the best. Whenever he took an L, that was like, that, that solidified it for me. Like season one, I liked him, and seeing his backstory, I was like, killed me it actually killed me but season two when we really got to see a lot more of his character with l sold like actually so sold like it's one of my favorite parts about the show like family dynamics in the show are one of my favorites like to see hopper and l become a family to see the buyer's family like to see Max have this found family within the friend group, like it is all so meaningful and it it, it it just does it for me. I think it's one of the strongest points about the show and you can see the characters that really thrive well under that family dynamic role and where they don't. Will and Jonathan and Joyce are characters that thrive best when they're in that family dynamic. I like Jonathan, I don't love Jonathan. Jonathan is good, like he's all right, but he doesn't really shine unless, in my opinion, when he's really with his family. I loved him in season one, this kind of back and forth he has with his mom where he's like begging her to like stop trying to find Will because it's like hurting him so much. This relationship he has with his brother in season two, like, like I said, I think he thrives best under the family dynamics role. Robin is... Robin is... The best. So I'm gonna put her at fantastic because I feel like I'm gonna put our best of the best after season four But she is fantastic. She is really amazing to watch. Like She just has a really good like awkward Dare I say quirky <laughs> persona in the show and I think it adds a really good element I think it adds a nice juxtaposition between Steve and Robin and Dustin. I think it's like all really great She's a good character and I love Maya Hawk and I really want to see her in so many more things um, Especially horror things because I freaking love her. Um, a I'm just gonna put her at meh because I'm gonna be honest I didn't have this like strong hatred for like her as everyone else, but like she's just like I'm not gonna put her at good. I, I didn't love her that much. The buyer's dad. I literally, he was like an ass. And if that's even him, I can't even really tell. Lucas, the best of the best. He is one of the most underrated characters on Stranger Things. Don't get it twisted. He has the best love dynamic with Max. Don't get it twisted. I'm not playing with you guys right now. This is what I'm talking about. Like I'm, I'm actually talking about this. Like I feel like he's still serving that side role. I really want him to be pushed into the spotlight a lot more because I think he has a lot to his character that will be great to see. Max, best of the best. She has been the best of the best since she stepped on my screen. I'm not kidding. I love Sadie Sink like so freaking much. I think she's so talented and I just love her character. I think it's so she's so charming. I love seeing her with the boys in season two and kind of being like, these are really dumb boys. Even though she's kind of like this tomboy, she was so like, you guys are like literally idiots. And I loved seeing her with Elle. I loved when they created that friendship, when she had this like, finally there was a girl in the group that she could hang out with and she was teaching Elle about boys and relationships and all that kind of stuff. It was fantastic. It's one of my favorite episodes of the show when Sadie and Elle skip school and then they go shopping it's so sweet and it's like that was like just solidified my love for her that I already had for her in season two like Mike um he was like really fantastic in the beginning and now he's mad because he's nasty and he it's not my fault you don't like girls oh you're evil you're actually evil and like I that's why I can't even I, I don't even need to explain I think it's Mike and Nancy's mom. I'm just gonna put her in a terrible role because I think she had like a crush on Billy and he was like literally in high school and that's like really freaky. Murray, I'm just gonna put in good because like, he's funny. 
Nancy, she's going up to fantastic because in the first season, not my favorite fan, just because she was like obsessed with Barb. <laughs> she, that's literally her best friend. I'm like, why are you so obsessed with her? Like she's literally just a person. Why, what are you bugging about? Oh my God, I'm actually so evil because I just got to Robin. That person that I put up fantastic was literally Joyce. I thought that was Robin. <gasps> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm gonna put in the best of best because she's a mother and she's mad and she's angry and I love it. I love crazy mothers that like will do anything for their child, like look batshit insane. Like that's a mother, that's a true mother. This is their teacher, like good, like look at all these like father figures, like Jonathan, uh, look at all these father figures that are just good, like do better. Alexi, like I don't care, I'm, I'm really sorry. Like people loved him in season three, I was like, just like didn't care, like meh. Steve, best of the best, I'm so sorry. I'm not even sorry. I don't even need to explain it. You get it. Moving on. This little shit from the season one, he's not terrible, he's meh. Cause I'm not gonna put him in terrible with like a literal abuser, like emotionally abusive husband and like high school cougar mom. Like I'm not gonna do him like that cause he's just a child, but he was rude. And Will is going into fantastic because I feel like he could be the best of the best, but he's losing the spark. The writers are losing the spark on him and I am sad to see it. I'm freaking sad to see it because he is one of my, in the first season and the second season, he was my freaking favorite. I loved him and I just wanted the best for him. And now that they gave him kind of like, he's out of his like extreme trauma, they're like, we don't need you. You're really complex and you've been through the most and you were literally the first person that was sucked into the upside down. Bye. Like, actually, like, that's so not okay. I, I'm like over it. Like, I can't even like, I hate it because I love Will and I think there's so much to do with his character. And I feel like part of the reason why they kind of pushed him aside was because he had so much forefront. But I feel like you don't need to like push him to like freaking background actor for like you to like, put some other actors to the forefront and other characters to the forefront. Everyone has really strong opinions on Stranger Things characters. These are mine. I feel like this is like not too hot of a take for me, but like, let me know what you guys think. I have so many thoughts about season four and I will get to them in my season four video. So we are cutting off this video very abrupt, no conclusion, no wrap up thoughts on the season because we're gonna be going into season four where we can talk about season four in its entirety and give all my opinions on it. And I already let some of my opinions and slip out right now. I will see you guys very soon for the season four volume one video. I hope you guys like this video. This was just to hold you guys off and to let you guys know my thoughts on Stranger Things before I release my season four video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Tweet at me your thoughts about Stranger Things. I love talking about Stranger Things with you guys on Twitter. I think it's a very fun. Comment down below your opinions on season one, season two, season three, literally any thoughts this is girl talk it doesn't have to be structured it doesn't have to be well thought out it can literally just be girl talk in the comments leave your comments down below i would love to read your thoughts on stranger things because it's just one of my favorite shows and i would love to discuss it with literally anyone so leave all your comments thank you guys so much for watching again i will see you guys very soon for the season four video bye